Oh, we got him. We got him. And that right there is how you fish a chatterbait. What's going on, y'all? Today we got something a little different for you guys. Somewhat of a tutorial right here. I want to show you guys how to fish a chatterbait, man. One of my early confidence baits when it came to fishing and really just show you guys how productive a chatterbait can be so I'm gonna go ahead and get the gear out of the car we're gonna show you how to rig what line what rod what reel what all you want for these chatterbaits man how to fish them let's go all right y'all so we are getting things started off at the water's edge man got my rod and reel over here I got some chatterbaits picked out I'm gonna show you guys trailers technique what kind of gear you want to use to throw these things on and then we're gonna actually get a little time fishing it it is the midday heat man we're just deciding to do this video last minute for you guys I really think you're gonna enjoy it two o'clock in the afternoon in the Texas summer heat or at least maybe it's not summer but the summer heat is here that's for sure and these bats can get a little finicky midday so we're also going to talk about timing when fishing these chatterbaits but let me go ahead and tell you if you're just going to grab some of these off the shelf by far the most popular option is the Z-Man original chatterbait so if you just had to take a look at a couple of these right here they are bladed jigs that is what a chatterbait is right there so think just your regular old jig and then it's got that blade for some extra commotion and vibration in the water. It's some moving bait, you can fish it quick, you can cover water. You guys are gonna be very productive with this and probably catch a lot of big fish on these chatterbaits. My two favorite colors are like a simple green pumpkin or natural color, or a black and blue for more stained water. Think clear water, stained water. If you only had two options, grab these two right here. And now let's talk about a couple plastics you can use to rig up on the tail end of them. First and foremost, we got something like a little creature bait bandito bug. I've used it many times. It pairs up very nicely on these chatterbaits. Then you've got something like uh, your craws. I've used craws many times on the tail end of these chatterbaits. Had major success. Also, swimmers. Very popular options right here. This guy right here, he's got a little bit of a saucy swimmer on the back. About a 3.8 inch. Fits perfectly. You still get all the action out of that tail. The skirt is not affecting it. That's pretty important. Same with that craw. All those appendages are passed. You can see you need that plastic to be a little lengthy. You want all that action to still be taking place from the piece you put on as, as a trailer. So you don't want that skirt to be covering it. Otherwise, maybe you want to trim that skirt a little bit up if you got like a shorter crawl, shorter bait as a trailer. Let me tell you about the quick differences between like a standard jig or swim jig and the chatterbait. So the chatterbait, of course, is going to have that blade, right? Well, also, there's no weed guard right here. So you're going to be fishing this mainly in open water. If you start getting real grassy, that's when people start to pick up things like the swim jigs. The swim jigs have that weed guard, and so with that weed guard, you can kind of cut through a little bit more grass, not get caked up, and so this is going to be for more grassy areas. The difference, of course, aside from the color, is just the fact that it doesn't have that, uh, the chatterbait does not have that weed guard that the swim jig does, and also the chatterbait doesn't have a head that's designed to cut through grass like a swim jig. This is more designed as just a heavier weight to get you down where you need to be and catch those fish, and so that is the difference between the swim jig now your standard casting jig is a little bit different as well. No blade like the chatterbait, creating all that vibration right here. Just a straight up jig. We've also got a creature bait on the back of that one. And you'll notice that the weed guard is even stiffened up more because this is going to be down at the bottom. The head shape is a little bit different to sit on the bottom. And you've got that real stiff weed guard because you want to be able to cast this guy into stuff on the bottom, trees, rocks. You're going to be getting caught up. You need that guard from the hook so you don't get stuck on everything. And then of course, you're going to have to set that hook up pretty decently hard because of the fact that you've got that thick wire hook that you need to penetrate the lip of these bass with whereas the chatterbaits a lot of times those bass will hit it moving so we'll talk about the hook sets here in just a moment now that you understand a little bit of a difference between a chatterbait a swim jig a regular casting jig just understand that it is a bladed jig and we've shown you a couple trailers you can use now one thing I will mention is you do want to try and match the color of course you can get away with throwing something that's a little off color uh, I thought I had an example here like this this chatterbait is a black and blue well the bandito bug trailer is an okeechobee crawl so it's kind of green on one side kind of blue on the other i've gotten away with that and had great results but if you can don't be putting like a a white trailer on the back of like your black and blue chatterbait it's just not going to work out as good as you think so next let's talk about the time of day for me getting up early when it's going to be summertime is going to be the most productive time if you can hit the sunrise or if you can get these things casted out at sunset right as that sun is going down that is when these bass are feeding during the summer month during the spring or those colder months a little bit different but now for summer you're going to have that early morning window you're going to have that late night window and you're also maybe going to find a productive midday bite but it can be a grind 
and you want to cast towards certain things during that time of day. So when the bass are feeding up shallow, there's always going to be little crawdads, there's going to be little bait. You'll see them swimming around your ponds, your lakes, and they're up shallow. Well, those bass are going to come and feed early morning. Your best bet is going to be casting parallel to the banks, getting close to all the structure. Bass are going to be cruising in, trying to come and eat that bait, which is your chatterbait, or in and around cover. So you might try and cast between these ducks right here and cruise it on through. You might try and cast near this grass right here and you might try and bring it on by. And so those are all gonna be productive areas. Think structure or the bank early mornings and you're gonna have some amazing success. Of course, you resort to casting out deep afterwards. Once it's heated up, these fish are moving back out. But for now, I want you guys to go ahead and cast parallel to the bank and buy structure and cover and you're gonna get those bites. Next guys, the weight of the chatterbait that you're using is gonna affect how quickly it falls and how fast you may have to bring this chatterbait in. Now, if you've got some real tall grass and the grass is almost to the surface of your lakes and ponds in your area, let's say during these summer months when it really gets caked up, it's best to go with a lighter weight. The reason being, you can bring that in a little bit slower, give those fish more time to react than with a heavier one. Let's say you get the 3 8 ounce, it's gonna sink a little bit faster and you're gonna be down in that grass. You're gonna have to be burning this chatterbait back in so that you don't sink. So the lighter weight's gonna be good if you wanna keep it closer to the surface. The heavier weight's gonna be a little bit better if you're gonna be fishing just a little bit deeper or you've got some submerged trees, things of that nature that you wanna get down to. That way you don't have to just go so slow to get that weight down there. It's gonna be working in your favor. That's how I choose the weight. I want heavier if I'm gonna be trying to go down a little bit lower, lighter if I need to stay closer to the surface. Now with the gear, the rod and reel I have got going on right now is an SLX DC. This is a Guggen Squad prototype rod and uh, the line is braid, which I fished for like the first year or two years of my fishing. Uh, I didn't know any better, I just went straight braid on all my equipment. And so like I had bright colorful lines. Some people talk about fish being line shy and not biting when they're seeing this line. I didn't let that bug me. I was catching fish. I believe there's no one right way or wrong way to do it. The benefit of bass fishing is we can all do it our own way and have amazing success, have a lot of fun and catch these bass. Here's what I recommend for all around as far as the line goes. 15 pound fluorocarbon. With 15 pound, I have the confidence of getting down into some structure and being okay. With 15 pound, it's not so heavy that I can still get casting distance. Like if you've got 20 pound, 20 pound is gonna be for some very heavy cover. 12 pound is if you've got fish that are very line shy in your area. They don't wanna bite, they're very finicky. 12 is if you've got more open water. You don't have to worry about too much structure that the bass can take you in and snap you off. 12 is probably the lowest pound fluorocarbon line I would use on a chatterbait comfortably. Now you get down into like the 10 pound range and below, you're gonna try and cast that thing and just the weight of the chatterbait is gonna snap your knot sometimes. I mean, you'll lose the bait just because you don't have strong enough line to even cast the thing out. So there is a proper line to be using with chatterbaits. I think 15 pound is a great all around option for many baits, not just a chatterbait. The heavier the line is, the slower it will probably sink when you fish that bait. For the reel, as far as gear ratio goes, almost all of mine are kind of like a mid-range. This is actually a higher gear ratio. This is an eight two to one. A lot of mine are like seven two to one, something in that range. Those seven, seven to one gear ratios are all my top pick. There's not too much of a variance, but basically what that gear ratio is, the higher the number, the more inches of line it brings in for a full turn of the handle. So if I turn this handle, let's say it brings in, let's use 20 inches of line. Let's say this fast gear ratio brings in 20 inches of line. Well, the next reel that's got a slow gear ratio might bring in 15 inches of line for a full turn. And so that's just how quickly your bait's coming back. A lot of times you'll fish this chatterbait and you'll realize how quickly or slowly you need to reel it to get the proper action out of it. So that gear ratio doesn't have too much of a factor for me as long as it's not a really slow gear ratio like in the fives or what have you. That way you can crank that bass in once it's on the hook. And for the rod, uh, and for the rod, a great all-purpose rod that also works in this area is a 7.2 medium heavy. For stuff like these moving baits, it's no different. A nice little medium heavy works well. If you could get a rod with a little bit of a softer tip, a little bit more of a bend at the end of the rod, that is gonna be great for your moving baits. So that's gonna be the go-to for the chatterbaits. So before we go ahead and switch over to the GoPro guys, I'm gonna tie a leader line onto here. Since this is straight braid, uh, we, we wanna showcase this in the way I would fish it on a day-to-day -day basis. I would normally be using fluorocarbon, but I left those reels at home. So I just have the straight braid reel. What I'm gonna do is tie a leader of my fluorocarbon with a double uni knot. That way we've got about five foot of line that's clear and the fish aren't gonna be line shy with, and we'll go ahead and start casting. Double uni knot just about tied, ladies and gents. Got it tied on, let me reel a little bit in. Now got our Guggen Squad fluorocarbon leader tied on. Before we start casting, one more thing, I wanna show you the difference between the Jackhammer, the more expensive and elite grade ch uh, chatterbait by Z-Man versus their standard original chatterbait. So here we go. First things first, and this guy's been through some use, so forgive me. The color matched blade. 
you'll see this is just a silver flashy blade, right? This one is color match. It's not gonna make too much of a difference for me in many cases. Next, you've got some eyes on the head there. You'll notice those eyes. The skirt, I believe, is hand tied versus almost like a glue. And that's one thing you will notice. The skirts are gonna last longer and catch more fish on this one before it's retired versus those originals that kind of have a, you can just see that skirt's gonna last much longer on the jackhammer. Now lastly, and probably my favorite thing about the jackhammer though, let me show you this. I'm gonna take off the saucy swimmer, which is kind of gonna ruin this bait. But in the name of education and training for you guys, check this out, man. The hook keeper. This is where the money's made right here. The hook keeper on these two baits, much different. The hook is also of higher quality on this jackhammer, but what I wanna talk about is the bait keeper. Look at those things right there. So with this bait keeper right here on the original, by the time you get a few bass biting that tail and kind of pulling it down, or you go through some grass, or you catch a couple fish, your plastics are gonna tear off of here and they're gonna get worn out much faster. That's gonna cost you more money right off the bat there than picking up this guy right here. Now the jackhammer has that double keeper much more efficient. That's going to keep your plastic locked on there much better. It's, it's even got one extra piece of security up here at the front where that widens and tapers out. That way your bait really sticks to that hook and doesn't get pulled off and you're going to be burning through a lot of those plastics that are going to cost you money. So that double hook keeper really makes a difference. It's probably the standout feature in my, in my opinion on the jackhammer over getting the originals. Now this guy, you can probably find these as cheap as 15 and as expensive as 20 bucks for one chatterbait man. So I recommend you guys starting off with the originals. These are only a few bucks and you're gonna go ahead and probably burn through a couple get snagged get hung up you want to cast by that structure again and so experiment with the cheaper stuff then maybe go for that jackhammer or if your budget allows just go straight for the jackhammer be my guest what I'm gonna do is actually link all this stuff down in the description so if you guys want to check out these chatterbaits I'll put them right there at the top of the description also with a pinned comment right at the top of the comments in case you guys want to check these out or pick some up for yourself I'll have them there for you let's go ahead now and uh, rig these things up and start fishing first things first I like to tie the Palomar knot. I have a video on how to tie this knot as well. I'll put that down in the description for y'all. All right, guys, we've got our knot tied. Again, feel free to use whatever knot you choose. Uh, there's many good options out there. It's not like the Palomar is just the only knot to use, but um, whatever you feel confident in, go ahead and tie that knot. Let's put on this trailer. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put a 3.3 inch saucy swimmer on the back of here. This smaller size should entice a lot of bites of fish from all ages. So the bigger the trailer, you might attract less fish and get less bites because you're only going to get those bigger fish potentially. Not, not, not guaranteed. And so here's one thing I want to talk about too is feeding your plastic onto this uh, chatterbait. So we're going to want our bait nosed up to the end of that hook just like that there. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. That means we're going to need to rig it, start rigging it essentially upside down and it's going to feed up and be right side up. The tail's going to be kicking the right way. So we also need to know once we push this into the plastic, where do we come out? so that it's rigged properly. Well, here's what you do. You put your pl plastic right on up to it, and you'll see this hook is gonna need to come out right about here on the plastic. So you can mark that little spot, and then you know where you need to exit the plastic. So we're gonna feed it down through that saucy swimmer until that perfect spot, which looks to be right about here to me. We're gonna push that up, get that right on that hook guard, and we're rigging up the original chatterbait just because I feel like this is going to be perfect for more people watching this video over the Elite. And look at that. The plastic isn't scrunched. It's not stretched. You've got it on that uh, hook perfectly. Now let's go ahead and start fishing this chatterbait. All right, guys, here we go. Crystal clear water. I don't see too many bass, but we can talk about the technique now for casting. So with the chatterbait, you can kind of cast it out and you'll see how fast you need to reel to get the right action and how fast you need to reel to get it to stay at the consistent depth uh, and those things. So you'll get familiar, but the first thing you'll notice is the rod tip. The rod tip should always be vibrating. You'll feel this blade vibrating in the water. If you don't feel that blade vibrating, it's a constant flutter of the rod tip. Then you know something is wrong. On the end of that cast, I didn't feel it vibrating anymore. Well, guess what happened? I went through some grass and the tail got wrapped onto the hook. That'll happen. Also, if you get some grass on the hook when you're fishing it, you'll notice that you don't feel that vibration anymore. This dragonfly is chasing it, that's funny. So I'm feeling that vibration, I'm feeling that vibration, now I'm down in the grass and I don't feel it. So I kind of rip a little bit. You see what I did there? You twitch that rod real fast and that will get it free most times. So I'm feeling the vibration. If I ever stop feeling it, I kind of whip it a little bit. Almost like I'm setting the hook, almost like I have a fish on. I'm trying to get that grass off the hook. 
that whip is going to help you do that and once you feel that vibration again you know you're good to just keep on cruising and it's good that you're getting into the grass if you're getting into the grass that's where the bass are going to be you find the grass you find the bass so you want to get them down in their element they're going to be ambushing prey in that grass so get down there in it sometimes next for me is going to be you want to hold your rod at a 45 degree angle and down towards the water that way you're going to be getting some depth also that 45 degree angle is going to have you right in line to set that hook when one hits if you're holding it straight out they're kind of going to pull against that drag of the reel whenever they bite the hook and you you would much rather have a little bit of that rod start to load up start to bend start to get some pressure and start to drive that hook through their lips that when you hammer it you go ahead and you get that fish on the hook and there's no escaping now with that being said when you get a bite on the chatterbait you feel that fish bite you feel that weight you do want to set the hook meaning you do want to drive that hook home and really penetrate their lip this isn't this isn't your grandma's hook right here this is not a little finesse hook this is not something you want to just lean into and it'll penetrate this is a thick hook right here that's a thick gauge so what's going to happen is you need to set that hook that way you make sure you get that bass and he's not going anywhere so now let's talk about where i would fish this thing it's not going to be uncommon if you're fishing midday like me right now and you do end up casting straight out for the bass to bite right where it goes from darkness to light right as it starts to get shallow you'll be creeping it creeping it boom right as you start to see that chatterbait that bass might just come and smash it right along that grass line that is very common now again if you're fishing this in the morning if you're fishing this in the evening here's where i suggest starting it's going to vary case by case you look at your pond you evaluate it but what i see is this is extremely shallow right here extremely shallow it starts to get deep right about here in line with the rod so i'm going to cast right along that there right along the bank and we're going to bring that back and that is going to be let me tell you what if you hit the sunrise or the sunset that should be a fish right there i mean i'm just waiting for one to hit and you heard me hold talk about holding the rod down well now that i'm in an area that's very shallow i'm holding the rod up a little bit still at that 45 degrees so i'm ready to drive that hook home but if you're fishing out a little bit deeper hold that rod down help that chatterbait get a little bit of depth if you're in the shallow waters or you want to bring it up to the surface because you need to go over some grass or an object you can raise that rod tip up a little bit but again you do want to be close to the structure you want to get down there in it these bass are hanging out by these trees and in the grass so you want to get close to it if you can let's go ahead and cast in a couple more places for you guys okay so here we go we've come up on some structure how would i fish this area right here if i was just coming up on this early in the morning you wouldn't see me cast out here deep at first first thing i'm going to do is cast under this tree also right there by that drain i'm going to cast along that structure and i think the casting gear is very important too because with a spinning reel if it's all you have go ahead and sure tie on a chatterbait but the casting reel is very important because you can thumb it to slow that spool down and stop your bait right where you want it to so we're going to take a cast of this box and we want to be able to stop it right before we hit it so we cast it out boom thumb the spool slow it down landed right next to it so anywhere by that structure can be a good bass hangout man let me tell you what same thing here midday in this shade good ambush point for these bass they might be creeping under this tree let's cast right there along it now let's say under this dock this is good too shade structure columns let's get under here you want to fish that chatterbait all throughout areas like this i see bait fish that i'm scaring out from under this dock if there's if there's little fish in here there's big fish eating them trust me on that so you always got to be thinking about that now there's a couple ways to work a chatterbait the the first and most obvious one how almost everybody works it is a consistent reel just like this okay but there's another way to work it almost like a texas rig or a jig or your bottom baits you can let it fall and sometimes i will let it fall for a few seconds before i start reeling if i think i'm not getting low enough and i want to get down where the fish are that is definitely a tactic i use i will certainly cast out to the middle of the pond and i will just let it sit for a minute and then I'll, right before I start reeling, it could be down in some grass and stuff. So what I like to do is I like to pop it and then start reeling. That usually helps it get free of any grass and that blade to start working right off the bat. You really need that blade working and that vibration and that shimmer and shine for this bait to be working 100%. That's obviously the first way of fishing it. Now let's talk about the alternative. You can cast it out, let it fall to the bottom, and you can fish it more like a bottom bait. You can creep it along the bottom, maybe imitate a dying fish or a dying crawfish, uh, all the other types of uh, bait that your fish are eating in the other lakes. That's you know, how you might wanna pick the color of your chatterbait too. If you see fish that are a certain color, try and match that with the bait color. So that second way of retrieving it is almost more like a, just a Texas rip. Pop it, get that blade fluttering, let it sink. And it imitates a dying fish just kind of working its way across the bottom until that hungry bass comes up and smokes it. So the last thing we're gonna do, you guys, is we're gonna go ahead and walk some more of this bank and really cover some ground and try and catch us a fish and then we're gonna call it a day. Again, the summertime midday heat, it's gonna be tough, but let's see if we can make it happen.
Oh, we got him. We got him. Just a couple casts afterwards, guys, and it's not that bad. Oh, that is what we're talking about, y'all. Come on with it. What did we tell you? And we set that hook, we got him up over the bridge. Yes! And that's a nice little pond bass out here for fishing this neighborhood, man. This is the type of fun you'll be having when you cast that chatterbait. Look, we set that hook right in the top of the mouth. That's what you want. Right in the top of the mouth, man. That fish was not going anywhere. What a catch. Catch. So what I'm gonna do is I don't have my pliers on me. I left all those tools in the car. I'm gonna go ahead and pop that hook. That way it pops out of his mouth. Boom. Let me tell you what, if there's big bass in your lakes and ponds, they're gonna hit the chatterbait, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode. All right, guys. And that right there is how you fish a chatterbait, man. Peace out. <laughs>